afternoon, Terriers, and welcome to the first installment of SFC Today Live. I'm your host, Sunny Faustino. And I'm Thomas Merritt. During today's program, we'll be showcasing some of the very best that Terrier TV has to offer, putting a spotlight on some of our recurring content. All the while, we will be your tour guides, so to speak, introducing you to the entertaining world of SFC Terrier TV. Coming up on today's show, Tyler and Dewan break down this weekend's WrestleMania main events on an all-new edition of Terrier Mania. Then we'll get an update on how the Yankees and the Mets are doing the early stage of the season with Terry TV Sports Report. And be sure to stick around as we'll round off our broadcast today with the debut of Actually Good, Terry TV's brand new music show. And we've got a good one for you this week, a breakdown of Future and Metro Boomin's latest collab, We Don't Trust You. Before we get into our first segment, here's a quick update on the upcoming events of SFC. This news update is provided by the official newsletter of San Francisco College courtesy of the Office of Marketing and Communications. Tonight at 6.30 p.m., a virtual panel discussion will take place on Zoom with the artists of the latest SFC Art Gallery Spring Exhibit on campus, Home Is, hosted by the exhibit's curator, Bianca Mona. To register, go to sfc.edu slash home is and reserve a spot. Experience the April 8th Solar Eclipse right here at San Francisco College next Monday from 2 to 4.30 p.m. CE ISO approved solar glasses will be available for the 121st people to show up. Don't miss out, this will be the only visible solar eclipse in New York City until 2079. Finally, for now, the Delaney Speech Competition will return next Thursday, April 11th at 1 p.m. in the auditorium. Make your voice heard. Cash prizes will be given out to the first, second, and third place victors. Head over to sfc.edu slash Delaney24 to register. With all of that on the way, Tom, let me ask you something. What is your opinion on Mammoth Boys? Well, as an Italian, I think I have a very strong opinion on it. I would like to say I'm not, but as soon as those chicken cutlets hit the table, I am. <laughs> That's great. So coming up next, we'll hear from the pros on this topic and many more as Girl Math returns with a new edition. After this quick messages, so stay with us. You're watching SFC Today. No, um, what's the word? So, LAS and Maguire are presenting the picnic and game day. So, pop up, okay? Alright, yeah! We all outside, right? Yeah! yeah. April 15th, Brooklyn Bridge Park at 1. Hey, Genesis! We'll be eating here where we'll have pizza, soda, and you're also welcome to bring your own snacks. In breaking news, is St. Francis in Brooklyn the latest site for some sort of bizarre cultural contagion? Throughout campus, students are performing these crazy ritualistic vocalizations accompanied by these animal-like movements. And sometimes it erupts into something primitive. And I don't mind saying a little scary. Up to the heavens of sublimity! Down to the depths of despair. What, what does all this mean? It's almost militaristic. This is my space! This, this is, is my space! space. What is happening? <laughs> hold on, hold on. This isn't anything subversive. This isn't any cultural contagion. These students are preparing for the 2024 Delaney Speech Competition. The Delaney Speech Competition has been happening for over 50 years, and it is now coming up on April 11th in the auditorium at 1 p.m. Any student enrolled can compete in two categories, either a four to six minute extemporaneous speech or a one to two minute impromptu speech inspired by a prompt and delivered from a few scribbled notes. You don't have to start from scratch. You can recycle and redraft a four to six minute speech that you've already done in the class. Or if you're just wanting to sign up for the impromptu speech, just show up with your intelligence. Oh, and don't forget, there's $800 totals in cash prizes for five award categories, including audience favorites. So don't wait. To register, go to www.sfc.edu slash Delaney24 or email Professor Grant at kgrand.edu for more information. So get on it. Register, prepare, research, rehearse. Register, repair, research, rehearse, and get ready to rumble! Hey, are you looking okay. for something to do April 15th? No, um, 
What the word? So LAS and Maguire are conducting a picnic and game day. So pop up, okay? All right, yeah. We all side, right? Yeah. April fifteenth, Brooklyn Bridge Park at one. Hey Genesis. We'll be eating here where we'll have pizza, soda, and you're also welcome to bring your own snacks. In breaking news, is St. Francis in Brooklyn the latest site for some sort of bizarre cultural contagion? Throughout campus, students are performing these crazy ritualistic vocalizations accompanied by these animal-like movements. And sometimes it erupts into something primitive. And I don't mind saying a little scary. Oh, do they have some sublimity? Down to the depths of despair. What, what does all this mean? It's almost militaristic. This is my space. This, this is, is my space. space. What is happening? Hold on, hold on. This isn't anything subversive. This isn't any cultural contagion. These students are preparing for the 2024 Delaney Speech Competition. The Delaney Speech Competition has been happening for over 50 years, and it is now coming up on April 11th in the auditorium at 1 p.m. Any student enrolled can compete in two categories, either a four to six minute extemporaneous speech or a one to two minute impromptu speech inspired by a prompt and deliver from a few scribbled notes. You don't have to start from scratch. You can recycle and redraft a four to six minute speech that you've already done in the class. Or if you're just wanting to sign up for the impromptu speech, just show up with your intelligence. Oh, and don't forget, there's $800 total in cash prizes for five award categories, including audience favorites. So don't wait. To register, go to www.soc.edu slash delay24 or email Professor Grant at kgrant.edu for more information. So get on it. Register, prepare, research, rehearse. Register, prepare, research, rehearse, and get ready to
our math is always mathing. In this show, we show our work and our worth by plotting the points, finding where the coordinate is at, making coefficient connections, and asking girl mathematicians for tutoring. I'm your tutor, Amanda. And I'm your tutor, Shiloh. And calculators on. Okay, first up we have it of the week. And in this week's it, we are discussing mama's toys. <laughs> what is your opinion on mama's toys? <sighs> I mean, I feel that. Every single mother should be respected, loved by their children. But when it comes to mama's boys, if you just want to date your mom, just say that. Date your mom? I said what I said. Date your mom. <laughs> Honestly, no. I feel like it's okay to be a mama's boy, but but don't make that your entire world. You know, life goes right. on. I love your mom, of course, always. I love my mom. But if you're going to be favoring your mother at all times, that could be crazy. Right, you know, right. Mom. It right. could be crazy. Insane. It could be very insane. Mm -hmm. But is there anything you like about mom's voice? <laughs> I think that's my answer. Oh. Okay. <laughs> um, I mean, I like the, you know, love. And, you know, I mean, I feel like. Okay to your mom, you know, they're getting. It's given. You You're going to love your mother, okay? Yeah. But mama's voice is like, a, like an extension. It's like. You know, like Chrome extension, like it's just Chrome? take it out, take it out, yeah. Um, well, okay, I don't think I need to ask you what you dislike. So. <laughs> just just yeah. Mm -mm. yeah, yeah. Okay, our next segment is Ask a Girl Mathematician, where we answer viewers' questions and offer our tutoring, our tutoring. So, our first question we have for you guys, we have someone asking. I've been dating this guy for a month, and he is a good person, but he will not introduce me to any of his friends. Is that a red flag? <sighs> okay. Um, my opinion on that, I do not think it's a red flag. A month of dating, meaning that you guys are going on dates, you guys are not official, yeah, I just started feeling each other out, to be honest, like, just to see where the vibe is. The first three weeks of dating is like, okay, hey. You know, I don't really need to introduce you to my peoples until, like, yeah, well, I know for sure you are the one. Yeah, I think asking for that one month of dating, you're not even official. You're right. Like, we're discussing as in, like, y'all are just talking. With that, I think it is not a red flag. I mean, you know, you're still getting to know your partner. Why are you trying to get with, you know, your friends and fit in that group? Like, that's weird. Um, how do you, how long until, like, to introduce the friends? Because I feel like everyone's timing is different, so. I would say when you're official. When you're official? I don't know. I feel that if, I don't know. I feel that if I already know the person, I'm thinking like I'm brand new to the person, I would have to be official with them. But if I already know the person and stuff like that, as a friend, maybe, maybe a little like before. Wouldn't you know the friends here? True, true, true. I, yeah, yeah. Okay. Next, next question, right? I'm a sophomore in college, and I have been with my boyfriend since freshman year, but... We never spend time with each other outside of school. Should I be worried about this? Absolutely, because what is this, a school relationship? If you just wanted that, just say that. But no, if you want to take it outside, take Perfect. it outside. There should be no Perfect. being afraid or anything. Yeah, because why are you not spending time with each other outside of school? Wouldn't that be where you like, bond the most? Right, because like, you're not in a facility. You're outside, doing whatever you want. <laughs> oh. Basically, I mean, you're not wrong. Right. Okay, what's the next question? This is our last question. So for this one we have, I've been with my boyfriend for two years, but he always seems to choose his mother over me. Ooh. Should I confront him about it or am I bugging? I say for this one, context, like more context would be a little, a little better. But if you feel like he's picking your mother over me, first check yourself to make sure that you're not being self-absorbed. And if you realize, no, you're not, and you're getting other opinions, and they're saying, okay, no, this is an issue, then yes, you should be worried. Um, definitely talk to the person, because that one conversation about whatever you feel really shows you how a person thinks and how they act towards you. But yeah. Yeah, I agree. I mean, you know, it's like, I mean, mm -hmm. like, honestly, like two years, that's a lot. That's a lot. That is, that is a long time. So that's all for today. Um, I'm Amanda, and thank you for watching Girl Math, and we see you guys next class. Bye! for something to do April 15th.
Yes. No, um, what word? So, LAS and Maguire are conducting a picnic and game day. So, pop up, okay? All right, yeah. We all outside, right? Yeah! April 15th, Brooklyn Bridge Park at 1. Hey, Genesis! We'll be eating here where we'll have pizza, soda, and you're also welcome to bring your own snacks. In breaking news, is St. Francis in Brooklyn the latest site for some sort of bizarre cultural contagion? Throughout campus, students are performing these crazy ritualistic vocalizations accompanied by these animal-like movements. And sometimes it erupts into something primitive. And I don't mind saying a little scary. Up to the heavens of sublimity! Down to the depths of despair. What, what does all this mean? It's almost militaristic. This is my space! This, this is, is my space. space! What is happening? Hold on, hold on. This isn't anything subversive. This isn't any cultural contagion. These students are preparing for the 2024 Delaney Speech Competition. The Delaney Speech Competition has been happening for over 50 years, and it is now coming up on April 11th in the auditorium at 1 p.m. Any student enrolled can compete in two categories, either a four to six minute extemporaneous speech or a one to two minute impromptu speech inspired by a prompt and delivered from a few scribbled notes. You don't have to start from scratch. You can recycle and redraft the four to six minute speech that you've already done in the class. Or if you're just wanting to sign up for the impromptu speech, just show up with your intelligence. Oh, and don't forget, there's $800 total in cash prizes for five award categories, including audience favorites. So don't wait. To register, go to www.soc.edu slash Delaney24 or email Professor Grant at kgrand.edu for more information. So get on it. Register, prepare, research, rehearse. Register, repair, research, rehearse, and get ready to roll! Hey, are you looking for something to do April 15th? No, um, what word? So LAS and Maguire are conducting a picnic and game day. So pop up, okay? All right, yeah. We all outside, right? Yeah! April 15th, Brooklyn Bridge Park at 1. Hey, Genesis! We'll be eating here where we'll have pizza, soda, and you're also welcome to bring your own snacks. How does it feel to be president of LES after all these years? Back to SFC Today. Coming up shortly, a WrestleMania-themed Terrier Mania is coming your way. 
Will Cody Rhodes finish the story, or will Bloodline reign supreme once again? But first, to celebrate Black History Month, our very own Michaela sat down with the director of Multicultural Student Affairs, Malik Starrett, to discuss his upbringing as an Afro-Latino man and talk about the impact of family and church and how it had him growing up as a man of color. All while answering the question, what does black history mean to you? Here's the first part of this heartwarming documentary. What's up, Terriers, and welcome back to our Black History Month segment called A Tribute to Our Past with our resident. Thank you for tuning in. And today we have with us the one and the only. Please introduce yourself. My name is Malik Sturrett. I'm the director of Multicultural Student Affairs here at St. Francis College. Um, I was hired in fall of 2018 to build the multicultural office from scratch. But a lot of it was learning on the job. And I benchmarked, I connected with other schools, I connected with other directors from different schools, and I really put everything that I was learning into building this space. Um, and it really was founded on me building relationships with students, understanding where the gaps were, understanding where the needs were, and kind of working from there with all of the other resources that I was gaining to kind of build what it is. And in year six, uh, we've come a mighty long way to have the Office of Multicultural Student Affairs and also now our Center for Inclusion and Excellence. In my opinion, it's the best office that you're going to You didn't hear that from me. You know what I'm saying. I'm just, I'm just saying. You didn't hear that from me. Can you tell us a little bit of like your background, you know, where you're from, where your family's from? Yes, so I am born and raised in Brooklyn, New York, East New York to be exact. Um, I was born and raised in church, um, sang in the choirs, was that young kid that was forced to speak for every holiday. So I had to speak for Black History Month, Easter. I had to do all of that. There was actually was no negotiation. There was no conversation. So if you even tried to get out of it, there was no. There was no like. There's no conversation. Like you know. You couldn't hide in the fellowship hall and just be. Oh, like, we tried that. Oh. Grandma come downstairs to the fellowship hall. Oh. So I had to, you know, I grew up in church, and that's where a lot of my leadership skills started. Um, was in church. I was I acted in all the church plays. I did all of that growing up, and then I wound up going away to college, um, where I studied music. I was in Connecticut, and um, I became really involved on campus, and it led me to my career of higher ed. My mom's side of the family is from down south, um, Sherrod down south, and my dad's family is from Panama, Cologne, Panama. I grew up a lot with my mom's side of the family, but my mom always made sure that I was connected to my dad's side of the family. Um, what happened is as I grown in teenage years up to my adult life, um, I got really into going to the Panamanian parades every year, um, hanging out with my big cousins, learning about the history where our family is from, um, and really like embracing the culture. Um, I literally, and I'll say this, which I think shaped me in the work that I do. I had one conversation that changed my whole life. My great uncle, um, my great, great uncle, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, we had a conversation one day. We were on the phone for like three or four hours. And he was just running down the history of my family, like how our family migrated from Jamaica to Panama and all this stuff. He's just breaking it down and telling me all this history and it stuck with me. And I take family very seriously. So culturally, I'm um, sure we know we're very big for the gatherings. We're very big for the food and the dancing and the celebration. And I know that growing up, my mom, my grandma's family, down south family, they die down by a certain time. They but sure my, do. Yeah, but my my Panamanian side, it's like we, we just get started at 8 p.m., 9 p.m., and I can feel my tias, and they're like we're dancing all night, like we're dancing all night, and I'd be like, I'm tired. They still going. But we had such a good time, and it's so filled with love, it's filled with joy, it's filled with laughter, and you learn so much just by being in the room that I embrace that with everything in me. So now that with the work that I do, it correlates because now my job is to kind of relate to these students, to understand, to build bridges, to fill gaps, 
um, but also to make sure that we're all treated, um, the equity is being passed on to all the leaders. Hello my wrestling friends and family, welcome to Terrier Mania where no matter what, here we finish the story. I'm Tyler and I'm here by my co-host Dewan. Yeet. No Yeet. Today we're going to be reviewing some matches from Wrestlemania 40 where, we should, where you can watch live this Sunday. Um, so first match we got up for you guys, it's your mommy and mine versus the man that comes to the towns. It's Rhea Ripley versus Becky Lynch for the Women's World Championship. So one question I have for you, Dewan, is if, say, Rhea loses this match, mm -hmm. do you think she loses any hype, like, in the months leading, leading after? Nah, because it's Rhea Ripley. Like, she's never going to lose her hype. 
She said she's never, she's never nah, going to lose her hype? She's never losing her hype. I mean, for me personally, I feel like it's the, it's all about what she does after. Because mm -hmm. after she doesn't do anything, then, you know, like, what's, like, it's like, yeah. It's like going to an amusement park and you ride, you ride like a really fun ride. And then after, you just sit at the food bar. Mm -hmm. Like, it's all about what you do after, you know what I mean? So then my next question is, who do you believe has the most momentum going into this match, Rhea or Becky? I would say Rhea, because she has, everybody expects her to win, Becky. Rhea. She's under. I'm, I'm saying Becky, I know. because, also because of the book that she just mm, released. True. I think she has like a lot of fan support. But she's also the underdog in this. Becky? Yeah, because everybody's all hyping Rhea. That is very true. Now, the next match we want to get into, mm. the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Cody Rhodes teams up with his first rival after returning to WWE, Seth Rollins, to take on the Bloodline team of Roman Reigns and Rock the Dwayne Johnson. Now, <laughs> now, Dewan, yeah. do you think The Rock will show any signs of ring rust in this match? Well, it's been seven years, right, since he had the last match? It's been around seven, seven or eight, eight, years? Been eight years since his last match. Like, he's going to have to perform because, you know, Roman has limited time. It's like, he's gonna yeah. have to show out. I mean, from what he's been doing recently, I don't think he has any signs of ring rust. He's been, he's been selling, doing pretty good. His selling is insane. Yeah, definitely. And now my next question is, you know, as I said, Cody and Seth were mm -hmm. enemies at first. Do you think Cody can trust Seth? Well, you can't really trust Seth if you know him, like, properly. Nobody can trust Seth. Yeah, that's, that's very true. Now, the next match we have coming up for you guys she created damage control, and now it's time for her to destroy that the monsters that she created. It's Bailey versus EO Sky for the women's championship. First question I have for you, Dewan, is do you think how do you think that how do you think the build has been for this match? Well, it's been good because Bailey's she's basically mean like the role model for everything. Like the story was behind her and EO from the beginning. That's true. I mean, for me, Percy, I feel like the build could have been a little bit better. I feel like they lost track of the feud and just started, like, they, they, put, it to the, they put it to the side because they had other stuff, like, they had to worry about. So I feel like the build could have been better, but it's still, still been a good build. I, I just think they could have done, done better. Now, my next question is, with the six-woman tag match being announced earlier in the week of Jade, mm -hmm. Bianca, and Naomi, mm -hmm. Uh, my question was, do you think this would be a straight one-on-one -on -one match or do you think it would be inter interference? Well, it would. Be, well, we all know damage control, right? It's like the match is going to be like halfway over and then there's That's when be interference one. comes in. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a bloodline match. Speaking of the bloodline, ooh. for over a thousand days, Roman Reigns has been champion. Now he's going up against a guy who defeated last year but wants to finish his story. It's Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes 2 for the undisputed WWE Universal Championship. Now, my first question for you is, do you think this match is gonna be bloodline rules or no bloodline? It's gonna be bloodline rules. You want it to be bloodline yeah, rules? Definitely. Why? Because I wanna see like the violence. I don't wanna see- So you're like, a man of violence, right? Yeah, I don't wanna All see right. like the good competition. <laughs> I have to agree. I want to see. I want it to be bloodline rules because I just want all the carnage as possible. Yeah. And my last question for you is, if Cody finishes his story, mm -hmm. say Cody wins, what happens to Roman after? He goes to Hollywood with The Rock. Like. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's assuming that The Rock goes back to Hollywood. What if he stays for a little bit? Well, he going, I'm going to take Rock, over. He's going to switch. The Rock, yeah. Rock is going to stay and Roman's going to go to Hollywood? Yeah. Just imagine that. The Rock stays and Roman goes to Hollywood. That's something I'd want to see. Well, thank you for tuning in. This has been Terry of Mania WrestleMania 40 Preview. I'm Tyler. And that was wrestling, my friends. We'll see you next time. How does it feel to be president of LES after all these years?
What's new? What's new? What's new? What's new? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. National Poetry Month, it's Precious Desti, the president of the Black Berets Poetry Club speaking. The Black Berets Poetry Club was created to provide a safe space for all artists to learn how to write and create different types of poetry or any type of writing art in general. People can join our club by emailing our club's email, sfcblackberets at outlook.com. Or you can come to the different events we are hosting and sign up that way. We are hosting a small event today, April 4th, during activity period in room 5110, where you guys can come and share your poetry or any writing piece you prefer to get featured on our Instagram, SFC Black Berets, throughout the month. We are also hosting an open mic slash poetry slam on April 18th. Please email us if you are interested or just show up. Everyone is welcome. We have so much more planned for you guys. Please tune into our Instagram again, which is SFC Black Berets, for further information about all our events coming up. Thank you and have a nice day. How does it feel to be president of LES after all these years? Welcome back to SSC Today. Tom, you have your work cut out for momentarily. Yes, I'll be appearing on Terrier TV Sports with Alex to discuss the start of the season for both New York baseball teams. He does it all, folks, but before that, a quick shout out to a few of our partners, including the Latin American Society. Be sure to check out their carnival event this upcoming Monday in the fitness room during activity period and RSVP for their biggest end of the year celebration on April 19 at 5 p.m. on campus. You can also catch LAS on their podcast, Sablano con Las, in collaboration with SFC Radio, which is a convenient segue to our other partner, SFC Radio. Follow them on Instagram at sfc.radio and listen to the station via the Radio FX app, the TuneIn app, or by logging into their website, sfcradio.sfc.edu. Stay on the lookout for updates on this year's Vinylfon happening on April 20th, streaming live on the station. Well, I'm going to take a minute or two to brush up on my stats, uh, but stick around after this. A uh, quick commercial break for an all-new edition of Terry TV Sports. Hey, are you looking for something to do April 15th? No, um, what for? So, LAS and McGuire are conducting a picnic and game day. So, pop up, okay? All right, yeah. We all outside, right? Yeah! April 15, Brooklyn Bridge Park at 1. Hey, Genesis! We'll be eating here where we'll have pizza, soda, and you're also welcome to bring your own snacks. In breaking news, is St. Francis in Brooklyn the latest site for some sort of bizarre cultural contagion? <laughs> Throughout campus, students are performing these crazy ritualistic vocalizations accompanied by these animal-like movements. <laughs> and sometimes it erupts into something primitive. And I don't mind saying a little scary. Up to the heavens of sublimity! 
down to the depths of despair. What, what does all this mean? It's almost militaristic. This is my space. This, this is, is my space. space. What is happening? Hold on, hold on. This isn't anything subversive. This isn't any cultural contagion. These students are preparing for the 2024 Delaney Speech Competition. The Delaney Speech Competition has been happening for over 50 years, and it is now coming up on April 11th in the auditorium at 1 p.m. Any student enrolled can compete in two categories, either a four to six minute extemporaneous speech or a one to two minute impromptu speech inspired by a prompt and delivered from a few scribbled notes. You don't have to start from scratch. You can recycle and redraft the four to six minute speech that you've already done in the class. Or if you're just wanting to sign up for the impromptu speech, just show up with your intelligence. Oh, and don't forget, there's $800 total in cash prizes for five award categories, including audience favorites. So don't wait. To register, go to www.soc.edu slash 24 or email Professor Grant at kgrand.edu for more info. So get on it. Register, prepare, research, rehearse. Register, prepare, research, rehearse, and get ready to rumble! Hey, are you looking for something to do April 15th? No, um, what for? So LAS and McGuire are presenting a picnic and game day. So pop up, okay? All right, yo, we all outside, right? Brooklyn Bridge Park at one. Hey, Genesis! We'll be eating here where we'll have pizza, soda, and you're also welcome to bring your own snacks. In breaking news, is St. Francis in Brooklyn the latest site for some sort of bizarre cultural contagion? Throughout campus, students are performing these crazy ritualistic vocalizations accompanied by these animal-like movements. And sometimes it erupts into something primitive. And I don't mind saying a little scary.
Welcome back to another edition of Terry TV Sports. I'm your host, Alex Guyvich Prodich, alongside Tom Marin. Today, we'll be talking about how both New York baseball teams have fared just under two weeks in the season. So without further ado, let's jump right in. We'll start at 161 River Ave with the New York Yankees. As of this moment, they sit atop of the AL East at 6-1, sweeping the Houston Astros, and winning a three-game series against the reigning National League champs, the Arizona Diamondbacks. Tom, what are your thoughts on the way the first seven games have gone for the Yankees, and what has gone right in your eyes? Well, I mean, I would love to say the pitching, but it's been a little shaky here and there with Cole being out. But I think the bats have really compensated for that, especially a few bats that we really weren't expecting. Someone like Cabrera, uh, I don't think anyone was really expecting him to be this effective in that nine spot, but he really has taken that role and ran with it. And Volpe, of course, is off to an amazing start. Yeah, the dog mentality out of this team really inspires me to be excited about this team. And like any other year, yeah. the lineup construction is consistent throughout the first seven guys in the order. And when guys heat up, some guys go cold and vice versa, right? We saw the first part of the season, Juan Soto, he was carrying the team a little bit. Volpe, hot star Cabrera, as you mentioned. But in the last game of the Diamondback series, really towards the end, Soto started to cool off a little bit, but Aaron Judge started to heat up. He right. hit an opposite field home run. Also a go-ahead RBI double. Alex Verdugo hit a two-run shot in extra innings. So when certain guys, they cool off a little bit, other guys take the heat, and they start warming up. Something we haven't seen from this Yankee team in the last few years. Especially last year. You were very afraid because they were very reliant on their big batch judge, but now they really have balanced that lineup out in a way that makes you a little more comfortable when you're watching the game. So Absolutely. So let's ride downtown. And take the 7 train, taking us to City Field, a not-so-great sight to see. The New York Mets had dim expectations to start the season, but now have performed as one of the worst teams in baseball. While their pitching has not been awful, their lineup has failed to make contact, and the manager is taking the heat. And also, as of this recording, they are tied 3-3 in a doubleheader with the Detroit Tigers. Tom, who do you think is to blame for this disastrous start? Well, for a start like this, I feel like you have to blame the manager. I mean, the players are going to do what they're going to do, but he's, you know, it's his first year here in New York. I don't really know how well he's handling it. Um, but you really hope that they could get it going. I mean, the bats are really what is their problem. But if they could just, you know, just lock in, fix that a little bit, I think they could go on a nice little run here in the beginning of the season. Yeah, and lately it's been down to the kids. You would expect a core of Francisco Lindor, Jeff McNeil, and Brandon Nimmo to hit really well, but before the game today, they were hitting a combined 068, and you can't get that done. Like, you can't have that. You cannot yeah. have that. Brett Beatty has come along a little. Francisco Alvarez has been doing his thing, and Pete Alonso, who is on a contract year, he's been doing his thing as well. And again, as you said, the pitching has not been bad at all. It's just the hitting. When are they going to take shape? And the Tigers, they're not this great constructed team. They're not the Dodgers. No. They are a team that's low on talent. You should be winning against them. And they have a tough schedule coming up against the Cincinnati Reds with Ellie De La Cruz. And also the Atlanta Braves, at least yeah. from certain, behind them, which is not going to be no. a very easy task. But nonetheless, that is going to wrap it up here for me and Tom at Terry TV Sports. If you haven't already, please check out and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And also, a little personal favor, check out and subscribe the, to the Big Blue in the Bronx YouTube channel as we are just under 70 subs to 2,000 subscribers. On behalf of Tom... I'm Alex Ibich Prodich, signing off. Have a good day, everyone. How does it feel to be president of LES after all these years?
National Poetry Month, it's Precious Desti, the president of the Black Berets Poetry Club speaking. The Black Berets Poetry Club was created to provide a safe space for all artists to learn how to write and create different types of poetry or any type of writing art in general. People can join our club by emailing our club's email, sfcblackberets at outlook.com. Or you can come to the different events we are hosting and sign up that way. We are hosting a small event today, April 4th, during activity period in room 5110, where you guys can come and share your poetry or any writing piece you prefer to get featured on our Instagram, SFC Black Berets, throughout the month. We are also hosting an open mic slash poetry slam on April 18th. Please email us if you are interested or just show up. Everyone is welcome. We have so much more planned for you guys. Please tune in to our Instagram again, which is SFC Black Berets, for further information about all our events coming up. Thank you and have a nice day. How does it feel to be president of LES after all these years? Welcome back once again to SSC Today. We are almost at the end of our first ever edition. Uh, Sonny, how do you think the show went today? I think it went pretty smooth. It's something that I believe we should definitely continue doing because we have a lot of fun and we managed to showcase many of our beautiful pieces and student work. So definitely yeah. continue doing it. Completely agree. Well, before we jump into our next segment, we can't forget to show the second half of Michaela's documentary, A Tribute to Our Past with Our Present. And how convenient, right after this, Michaela will be co-hosting the first installment of Actually Good, a brand new music show for SFC Terrier TV. Well, with that being said, here's part two of our documentary. You spoke about the importance of church and community. What role does that play in your current, like where, where you currently are? What role does that play? In? in most cases for us as young black people, I think church is kind of a foundation for us, for a lot of us, for most of us. Um, we grew up in church and that's kind of where we get our first uh, life lessons, right? That's kind of where we have no choice to go. You're going on a Sunday, and for some of us, if our parents was in leadership or in church, you was there three or four days a week. Or on Sundays, you're there till like 5 p.m. because they got church meetings, they got to go to this program. I used to be the kid that sneak off and go to the corner store, get the sandwiches, get in trouble, because you're not supposed to leave the church, but Church was a big part of my upbringing. That's where I, I met outside of your cousins. Your cousins are like your first friends, your siblings, your cousins. Um, my first real group of friends was in church. I wasn't allowed to just be outside because of how my family felt the neighborhood was or whatever. 
So my outlets was church. Like to hang out with your church friends, the youth group on Friday, y'all yeah. go bowling together. Like you don't, yeah. so that was the bowling. fun. Bowling, yeah. that was all of the stuff that we did. So growing up church was what kind of shaped me into who I am. And when I went, to, when, when I went away to college, um, I began to expand my wings because the limitations were kind of taken off by family. Yeah. And I've grown tremendously because I kind of moved into different things, tried different things. I got to get greater understanding, which really shaped my mind to be able to do this kind of work. So your impact, your impact is felt everywhere in this building. Is it? Everyone, it should be. Everybody okay. knows you by faith. If they don't know you by name, they're like, that guy, the guy who be in the um, in the room back there, they know you. I just feel like everybody needs to know who this man is because without him, the community that a lot of us had on campus, it wouldn't feel the same without him. So I thank you for that. Thank you. Too. Um, the important question that has to be answered by the one and only: What is Black history to you? Black history is us. I think that um, we come from a long line of ancestors who suffered, who gone through, but also who produced, who have shaped kind of the world that we're in today. And that goes untalked about. Um, I am black history. Like to be able to be an inaugural director of a multicultural facility college to kind of shape a culture that did not once exist the same way. That's black history. And I think that black history is not just February. Black history is every day. Black history is every time we walk up, wake up, take one step outside the bed, and we are starting our next day. We are stepping and creating history. And I think that if we embrace that, we're still in the process, like every day is an opportunity to continue to build on history. We would move and think and act very differently in how we navigate our everyday life. So history, yes, I can talk about my ancestors all day long, but even when I begin to look at my own life, I realize that there are things, records that I broke in my life that family my age have not done. So I am black history, you are black history, we are black history, um, and we're continuing to build. And a few years from now, people are gonna be talking about stuff that we do. So black history is, we come from a long line of people who paved the way for us to be here today. Um, and I pay homage to them, and I'm helping to pave the way for the people that are coming behind me. And that's how we have to keep doing it, to continue to build and see ourselves move forward for that Martin Luther King dream, to really continue to see it live in the totality of what it was meant for. If there's one thing, what would you want to change or be seen changed in the black community? That's easy. It's actually something I pray for often. I pray that the black community, uh, not just the black community, but everyone of color, I pray that we understand what, it, what community really means. Mm -hmm. I think that we always talk about these brotherhoods and these sisterhoods and all that stuff, but we don't really embody what that means. And I think that we come together as a community and really like motivate each other, push each other, help each other, um, come together to make change as a unit. We will see the things that we often talk about uh, so for me, I wish that we really understand the power of community because the power of community changes lives and the power of community helps uplift us in ways that we have not seen. There's one piece of advice that you could give somebody, even if it's don't eat too many Jolly Ranchers or stay away from the Sprite. Don't ask me about food. Because it's <laughs> One thing I'm going to do. <laughs> what food spots to go to, right? <laughs> What's, what's something that you want to let people know? A little bit of advice for their future endeavors. Uh, I'll say this. I'm learning personally right now to not uh, dimmer my own light. I think a lot of times we dimmer our own lights because of insecurities, because we may not see the impact or we don't see sometimes how far we come uh, because we don't check off the little wins along the way. You just see a big picture and it's like, because the big picture's not here, we get, we move in a certain way. Um, so I would say don't dimmer your light. You are valued, you're smart, um, you take up space in a room, take joy in that and be who you are and you'll see nothing but greatness.
looking for something to do April 15th. No, no, um, what's the word? So, LAS and Maguire are presenting a picnic and game day. So, pop up, okay? Alright, yeah. We all outside, right? Yeah! April 15th, Brooklyn Bridge Park at 1. Hey, Genesis! We'll be eating here where we'll have pizza, soda, and you're also welcome to bring your own snacks. In breaking news, is St. Francis in Brooklyn the latest site for some sort of bizarre cultural contagion? Throughout campus, students are performing these crazy ritualistic vocalizations accompanied by these animal-like movements. And sometimes it erupts into something primitive. And I don't mind saying a little scary. Up to the heavens of sublimity! Down to the depths of despair. What, what does all this mean? It's almost militaristic. This is my space! This, this is, is my space! space! What is happening? Hold on, hold on. This isn't anything subversive. This isn't any cultural contagion. These students are preparing for the 2024 Delaney Speech Competition. The Delaney Speech Competition has been happening for over 50 years, and it is now coming up on April 11th in the auditorium at 1 p.m. Any student enrolled can compete in two categories, either a four to six minute extemporaneous speech or a one to two minute impromptu speech inspired by a prompt and deliver from a few scribbled notes. You don't have to start from scratch. You can recycle and redraft the four to six minute speech that you've already done in the class. Or if you're just wanting to sign up for the impromptu speech, just show up with your intelligence. Oh, and don't forget, there's $800 total in cash prizes for five award categories, including audience favorites. So don't wait. To register, go to www.soc.edu slash Delaney24 or email Professor Grant at kgrand.edu for more information. So get on it. Register, prepare, research, rehearse. Register, repair, research, rehearse, and get ready to Hey, are you looking for something to do April 15th? No, um, what's the word? So LAS and Maguire are presenting a picnic and game day. So pop up, okay? Alright, yeah. We all outside, right? Yeah! April 15th, Brooklyn Bridge Park at 1. Hey, Genesis! We'll be eating here where we'll have pizza, soda, and you're also welcome to bring your own snacks. In breaking news, is St. Francis in Brooklyn the latest site for some sort of bizarre cultural contagion? Throughout campus, students are performing these crazy ritualistic vocalizations accompanied by these animal-like movements. And sometimes, it erupts into something primitive.
Welcome to Actually Good, where we are always in tune but never off key. On this show, we conduct and discuss what is actually good or not in the music industry. On this episode, we'll be focusing on the newest album from Future and Metro titled We Don't Trust You. I am Tyler, my favorite artist, of course, being Lil Uzi Vert, because Lil Uzi Vert is more, he's an alternative rapper. He's someone that people don't really like, you know, Associate, them, associate themselves with Uzi and the stuff that he does, but his music connects to like a wide majority of people. So that's why I, I mess with Uzi. And My favorite artist is Kehlani because she can, she's an R&B singer, but like she's on all spectrums of R&B. And I feel like you really can't go wrong. Mm. My favorite Metro Booming track will of course have to be Bad and Bougie, produced by Metro Booming. Migos Ooh. featuring Lil Uzi Vert. Okay, that's a good one. I completely forgot mm. about that. Mine is Too Many Nights by Metro Boomin featuring Don Tolliver. I feel like that's that's one that people not going to pay too much that's attention to. That's a slept to. on one. Mm -hmm, uh -huh. mm -hmm. So, our first segment is called Superstar Rundown. Here's the Superstar Rundown on We Don't Trust You. According to Genius.com, We Don't Trust You was released on March 22nd, 2024, and it marks the full-length reunion of frequent collaborators Future and Metro Boomin. The project's title calls Metro Boomin's legendary tag, voiced by Future. If you're Metro, I don't trust you, I'm gonna shoot you. Legendary, legendary, legendary. You have that. to say it like that. Legendary. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the star stats. According to Yahoo Entertainment, many outlets began speculating how the album would have features from Travis Scott, The Weeknd, and especially Kendrick Lamar would fare commercially. The LP looks to secure the top spot on the Billboard, two, Billboard 200 with 190,000 to 220,000 first week units. It is also noteworthy that every song on the joint effort managed to land on album, Apple Music's top 20 chart during its opening day. Now, moving on, let's break down the album itself. Now, Michaela, let me ask you, what good things did you, did you notice about the album? Um, for starters, I like the fact that there weren't a lot of features. Well, the, what was there, like maybe four at most? About maybe four, four or five. Four features, but the rest of that was just straight Future and Metro, and I love that about an album because I feel like an album with too many features doesn't really show the artist, like, artistry, so to say. Like, it doesn't show what they can do. So with it being limited features, it gave, it made the album even better. Also a good amount of songs, too. I believe like, maybe, there's like 24 songs on the, around, like in the 20s. Yeah. That's, that's a good amount of songs, especially with less features. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing I liked about the album was that it was, I, the, the length of the album was pretty, it was like a calm album. Like it wasn't too, it wasn't too happy. It wasn't too <laughs> sad. It was, it was like right there. It's like something you'd listen to like when drive, like driving a car. Like driving a car late at night. I would listen to this album. I thought definitely. this album was really good. I definitely would listen to this album driving. Now, what's some things about the album that you wish they could have improved on? Um, I honestly feel like there was only one song out of the whole album that I can truly say, when I heard this, I was walking down the block to school, and I'm like, what is this? Like, I really stopped in the middle of the street. I was like, what is this that I'm listening to? And not too much on me, because it's the song, uh, Running out of time. 
You mean I, like running out of time? No, because it's happy. Like the beat is too ha <laughs> happy. And quite honestly, Metro, you you weren't booming on this one. I'm gonna be honest with you. You weren't Kayla booming on this she one. You don't like happy songs, y'all. No, because <laughs> because it's beef. Why are you giving me a happy beat and on the on a on a, a album that's given static? Like, be for real. But you know, you did your thing with the rest of them. But that one, I'm sorry, I can't give it to you. So Do if you didn't like that, time. what song? What songs did you like on the album? Then? Okay, so boom, right? The ones that he okay. did, right? So, type stuff, you know, type stuff, claustrophobic, like that. Cinderella, Cinderella made me feel like a baddie. I don't know why, but it just gave baddie vibes. Yeah, and wow. GTA, GTA, I like. Controversial opinion. I didn't like type stuff. I didn't like. Mm. I didn't. Yeah. I didn't like it. I, like I was listening to it. It started off good, but then. I think it all changed once Playboy Cardi's part part hit. What? I didn't Why? like the, I didn't like Cardi's part. I didn't but like Cardi's part. Uh, you don't like Cardi, but you like Uzi. No, no, no. That's not what I said. You don't I like said, Cardi, but I you like, like Uzi. But I they're like, both are alternative rappers. I, I like Cardi. You, I just didn't like Cardi's part in this song. I listen to Jump Off the Roof any time of the day. We're not talking but, about Jump Off the Roof. Exactly. We're talking about this. And I didn't like this. I'll let you be for now. I'll let you be for now. <laughs> Anyway, we may have our own beef, but let's get into the Kendrick beef, okay? Future, Metro, and Kendrick Lamar versus J. Cole and Drake. The track Like That sees Future and Metro bringing Kendrick Lamar as a guest feature. Needless to say, Kendrick got a few things off his chest. Kendrick takes it a step further, pronouncing himself alone as the best in the game. This comes from Genius.com. So, Michaela, I just want to ask you, like, like, what are your thoughts on this whole, like, beef situation that they got going on right now? So, I'm not one to, uh, you know, indulge in the beef of these social media and rap and celebrity stars. You know, I'm not one to do that. But, um... For starters, if we really want to talk about beef that needs to be had, it's Drake shouldn't even be in this to start with. Um, in the song, Kendrick, he mentioned big three, which is him, J. Cole, and, and Drake. If we're talking about lyrically, Drake is not on the same level as J. Cole and Kendrick. Yes, he is very versatile. He can go through different genres and all of that other stuff. But if you put him in a freestyle battle with Kendrick and J. Cole, he's what is he going to do? Yeah, uh, I'm outside. That's what Drake is going to do. That's what Drake is going to do, OK? He's, he's going to start trying to sing, OK? Yeah, Drake wouldn't last in a, in a freestyle <laughs> battle. Let's be honest here, y'all. He's not just, lasting. Just take him out the beef completely. He's a pretty boy in it. Yeah, I mean, I have to agree on that. Drake don't, it's all like, there's like one of these things just don't belong. And Drake is unfortunately <laughs> that thing that just don't belong. One of these things is not like not the like other. Not like the other, and mm -hmm. that's Drake. <laughs> but in terms of like all like the like the, the beef that's going on, the disses, I'm not gonna lie, I kind of like it. I kind of like it, because rap has been boring recently. True. And like the beef that we had, like um, there's there was Lotto and Ice Spice. There was all those other beefs. Like it wasn't it, it wasn't gi it wasn't given. Oh, but Megan and Nikki. Megan and Nikki, Lotto, Ice Spice. Like it just, none of these be beasts was given, and I feel like this one. I think the the difference between this beef and all the others is that. Okay, hear me out, right? Oh gosh, okay, I'm hearing. These these are rappers with legacies. Okay. You feel me? These are rappers with legacies. No disrespect to. Uh, to everybody's favorite artist, Ice Spice, but <laughs> like F Future, Drake, Metro Boomin, we've we've gained respect for all of them through their work and stuff like that. Sure. So that's why this beef is so like entertaining to everybody because it's people that we all respect going at it. You know what I'm saying, one on one. And it's also rap beef. It's not stuff like outside where they talk about families and bringing a whole bunch of other. It's literally about music where it should be. Exactly. It's all about the music when it comes to this. Now, it's time for the ver verdict. <laughs> After reviewing Future and Metro Boomin's album, We Don't Trust You, Michaela, I have to ask, do you think it is actually good? You know, Tyler, taking a lot of thought on this. 
talk to me. And um, I'm going to say that if Young Metro don't trust you, I'm going to shoot you. I'm going to shoot you. It was good. It was definitely good. Good word for it. Nah, Tyler, now I have to ask you, what is the verdict? After reviewing all the evidence, after, you know, consulting with my peers, mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to have to make the decision. That is actually good. I think it's actually good. Let me see that sign. Yeah. It's not upside down, right? Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> I think it's actually good. I think mu music-wise, the songs, with the exception of one, <laughs> debatable. Are, I think the songs are... One thing I know about a good song is if I could listen to it more than one time in like a, a time span, yeah. it's a good song. So I could do that with the majority of the songs on this album, so I'm going to say it's actually good. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> now, let's move on. It's time for Put Me On, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> what is Put Me On? I'll tell you right now. The youngins will know. Exactly. It's where we put you on to a song of our choosing. Now. Michaela, what's a song that you would give to the viewers? What you put put on to the viewers? Okay, so if you've listened to our show Safety First, then you know that my favorite artist is Kehlani, and I'm behind her ten toes down. But this week, I'm gonna give y'all something a little bit different. I'm gonna go with an Afro beat song. It's called Ohema by Vic Tony, featuring Crayon and Bella Sherm Sh Shmurda. 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 Yeah, Shmurda. Got it's a really good song. I found it on TikTok, and now I'm just, like, vibing with it. Well, my song recommendation, I'm going to put you on to a song that I've been listening to all week. <laughs> yeah, Glow by Glorilla. Listen to yeah. that song. Curbin it's a good on song. Curbin. curbing on Curbin curbin all on day, curbin. every day. And with yeah. that being said, thank you for watching the first ever edition of Actually Good. I've been Tyler. I'm Michaela. And thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye-bye.
Well, thank you very much for tuning in to the first edition of SFC Today Live. All of these segments will be available on demand on our YouTube channel to be posted in uh, the upcoming, few upcoming days. So be sure to subscribe and click the bell so you know when we drop a new video. And be on the lookout for some exclusive content coming soon to Terrier TV, including highlights from our collaboration event with the Video Game and Anime Club with a Super Smash Bros. tournament. April is destined to be a big month for Terrier TV, so be sure to take notice. With that being said, I'm Thomas Mara. And I'm Sonny Falsino, signing out. Enjoy your day, everyone.